why is it that when I started eating 4,000, 5,000 calories a day from about 1,500 calories a day, eating a buttload of vegetables and just lean meat, I lost 23 pounds in 10 days. I remember this graphic that showed that um, there was fruit loops on number one or much higher, or healthier mm. than, than eggs. Eggs was like yeah. unhealthy. Frosted flakes was actually ranked higher than cornflakes. So the sugar made it better, apparently. Welcome to the Plant Free MD podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining another episode of the Plant Free MD. I'm your host, Dr. Anthony Chafee. And today I have a special guest, uh, Ms. Lena Will, going all the way over from Germany. Do I have that right? Yes, I'm from Germany. Very good. <laughs> so you've been a carnivore now for a little while. Um, can you tell us a bit about that? How did you get into a carnivore diet in the first place and how do you find it? Yeah, thank you so much for being here at first. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I'm so grateful. Hey. For this opportunity and i appreciate your hard work you're putting oh. into spreading your knowledge about this diet uh first of all oh, and you. yeah i got into this diet because um i met somebody that had an autoimmune issue and mm -hmm. he really uh, was struggling with this disease he was inflamed all the time and uh, suddenly he noticed this diet and uh, yeah he tried it and he got better and this has had such a huge impact on me, witnessing that, um, him getting better. I'm so grateful for that. And yeah, that's why I decided that this is the proper human diet and this mm. has to be healthy. And I just wanted to maintain my health. That's how I got to carnivore. <laughs> and that's why I'm still doing it. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, so how long I never you... had any health issues. Sorry. Oh, good. So how, how long have you been doing it now yourself? It's um, like over one and a half years now. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just once you start, I just can't imagine going back. I mean, mm -hmm. there are sentences stuck in my head as plans are trying to kill you. Yeah. That's what you're always <laughs> saying. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, just knowing how many diseases really got um, better when, when going mm -hmm. carnivore, I just have to imagine that this has to be the proper diet and i just want to maintain my health <laughs> yeah well that's good i mean that's yeah that's what what we should try to do obviously it's better to to head that off before it becomes a problem so yeah that's good so what sort of differences have you noticed have you noticed that um you felt a lot different or are you just keeping you as you are i i've been i've never been seriously sick so i didn't have like major changes in my health I noticed that I'm more energetic throughout the day, that I can just leave the house in the morning and feeling good than coming home, eating once, for example, and being totally fine with that. I noticed that I'm, I stopped stressing and worrying about food because I, before that, my relationship with food probably was never really good. I, um, I don't know. I was just worrying about food, feels like guilt or shame after eating, whatever, um, I would leave the house without eating, coming home in the evening and then like eating whatever and uncontrolled and waking up the next morning feeling fat, disgusting, not eating because I didn't want to look fat or whatever. Um, that was basically my life. <laughs> and going carnivore combined with going to the gym basically eliminated that completely because now I'm just eating and I'm feeling full after eating and good and I have to eat because I have to get energy and it's just not a deal anymore. And I never thought that a relationship like this is even possible with food. I thought that everybody that didn't worry about food was pretending <laughs> like, what do you mean you're not worrying about food? Um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's just that you are eating the right things, I guess. And that's why you don't feel bad after eating. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 um, you know, you shouldn't feel bad after eating. I mean, we're, 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 we have to eat 
So, you know, why should we feel wretched after we're eating? You should feel good. You know, that's a good sign that, uh, that you did something good. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, that as well. <laughs> yeah exactly. So, uh, well, that's good that it, it's really nice when people that are younger and don't have health issues are coming to this as well, because you just, you, you had it off. I talked to so many people that say, well, you know, I, I actually feel pretty good. You don't have any issues, so I don't, I don't I don't need to sort of change what I'm doing because I'm doing pretty good. But obviously, you don't want to you don't want to wait until you get a problem. And also, yeah, one hundred percent agree. Yeah, and also, <laughs> you have no idea how good you could feel. If yeah, you well, properly. It's also uh, when I was uh, younger, and I thought about when uh, when I'm ever getting pregnant, I have. I couldn't eat tomatoes for like nine months and it was stressing me out because I loved tomatoes. Mm. <laughs> and the thought that uh, eating tomatoes during pregnancy is a bad thing just stresses that nobody's worrying about eating tomatoes when you're not pregnant. And mm. I also uh, found that a lot of people that are, were infertile, they started eating carnivore and suddenly they could have children. That's that's mm. just amazing what carnivore can do to you. <laughs> so, Yeah, well... Um, even just um, you know, polycystic ovarian syndrome seems to be driven by by insulin resistance, and so you know, you, you get rid of the carbs, you get rid of all that, and that all comes down, and and you end up um, being able to reverse a lot of these issues, including PCOS, and, and get pregnant again, which is and, you know a hallmark of good health is is your hormonal yeah. health fertility. Really. Yeah. Um... I I also used to eat like a lot lot of veg vegetables. I mm. was also, uh, to be honest, um, I was on the way of going vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that's, that's all you're hearing. You everywhere, it's just eating vegetables is healthy. Eating vegan is the way to go. And I was always concerned about my health. And um, yeah, health is the most important thing. So uh, I was really into that as well. And I really wanted to eat no meat at all and then i discovered carnivore and yeah things changed quickly <laughs> yeah that's funny well yeah i'm glad you i'm glad you sort of figured that out before you you ended up going down that route and hurting yourself yeah yeah that's true you know it's also well, funny that um my mother uh she when i went carnivore uh, she uh, really had um or she was afraid of cholesterol <laughs> Mm -hmm. And noticing me eating all of this stuff, uh, she also can now eat eggs, whatever she wants or how many she wants because she was limiting her intake at that point. So <laughs> you're yeah. having a huge impact. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, even then there, you know, there isn't, there isn't much contention that dietary cholesterol doesn't really affect your serum cholesterol. You know, that's something that's sort of been put to bed. Even if you think that higher cholesterol is bad, most people agree that eating more cholesterol doesn't actually change the cholesterol in your body. And yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, at the same time, if you just stop eating altogether, your LDL will go up, right? Mm. Your cholesterol will go up. You know, it's like, why is that? So, is is not eating is that is that causing heart disease? You know, probably not. Um, and you know, a lot of people recognize in many studies looking at the benefits of fasting and, you know, religions that fast regularly, you know, have, have a lot of health improvements because of that. And that raises the cholesterol. So what's, what's going on here? So it's not from the food, it's not from the cholesterol that we're eating. And if we don't eat or we don't eat carbs at all, cholesterol goes up. So really it's more to do with metabolism than, than anything else. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, that's good that your mom is coming around. How long did that take? <laughs> Yeah, she um I think she she was doing the keto but she can't really stick to it because then oh there's cake and whatever, you know. <laughs> so yeah. but she she really um started eating more meat uh and eggs as well and I'm recommending it to everybody that <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, when you're having health issues when you want to lose weight I'm like mm, you could go carnivore I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I also feel obligated somehow when somebody has a disease, I wouldn't like to bring it up like, yeah, you know, there's this thing I'm doing because that was like, I saw how much it helped somebody and I just feel I don't want to gatekeep that. 
Like, no, yeah. You never know that this is even an option because all you're hearing is go vegan and every your all your problems are going to be solved. Nobody's talking about this diet and yeah, yeah knowing that it can help makes me also want to share the knowledge somehow. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. You know, there's something that the doctor uh, Gary Fecky said, which is, you know, once you once you see this, once you see the benefits that eating yeah. that day, uh, can give, like you can't unsee it. So, you know, so as a doctor, when you're when you're putting patients on a keto carnivore diet and they're reversing their diabetes and they don't need to get their foot amputated or their leg amputated. Yes. You know, you can't, you can't unsee that. You can't just be like, eh, whatever. It's just one of those things that's not supposed to happen. You know, these things are supposed to get worse. And by the time you're chopping, right. chopping off legs, it, it's a bad case. And then all of a sudden it goes away. It doesn't just go away. Obviously what you did, uh, helped. And so you, you can't just ignore that if you're at all conscious or responsible. So, you know, um, you seeing that with your friend, you know, obviously you're going to want that for other people too. Oh, definitely. It's just that um, he would have gotten uh, medications uh, and mm -hmm. they would have been like a bit against the symptoms and you'll have loads of side effects. And of course the medications have to increase and you'll, by the way, have to take them for the rest of your life. And this is something that they are telling people. And then there's this diet, he changed his diet and he went better. And you mean, how much courage do you have to have to just change your diet and say no to this medication i thought he's crazy you know <laughs> like what do you mean you're not taking the medications um you're going to die yeah yeah it turns out he was right <laughs> yeah I, and if, if you don't mind me asking what what issue did he have um i'm not sure if i can say that because uh he was public about his autoimmune disorder uh mm. i'm not sure if you want me to Oh, say okay. what exactly yeah. he had no, um, okay. but he had like a lot of inflammations had to go to operations he was really of course couldn't do sports he was lying in bed mm. um all the time oh, okay. yeah was yeah. really really not a good situation to mm. be in and yeah, um he started with paleo pa paleo um yeah, and yeah, then yeah. switched to carnivore because he noticed like um potatoes weren't good mm. <laughs> so for example that yeah, what's the thing? I think we should. I think we should take back that name because the real paleo diet is a carnivore diet. Like that. That's the whole reason we're doing it is because it is a paleolithic diet. That's what we were eating in the ice ages. That's what we're supposed to eat. So yeah, I think I think we need to take that that name back. You know, because I'm doing paleo, real paleo. Oh, really? But are you eating honey? No, I thought paleo is also with honey and no, nuts no, that's and... fake paleo because what real Sorry? paleolithic man ate was just meat, right? You know, oh, okay. so they co-opted the name. They they decided that like this is the paleo diet, but that's not actually what the paleo diet was. The paleo, well, I mean, for certain parts of the Paleolithic area, but era, but for the vast majority of um of human existence, we've been eating predominantly, if not exclusively, meat. And certainly in the ice ages, what else is there to eat? You know, if you're yeah, if you're on a, if you're on a uh, you know, a two thousand mile glacier. And, um, you know, and there's only animals around you. What are you eating? <laughs> no, that's sure. Yeah. So that's what I think the real paleolithic diet. So I'm just saying we should take back that name and, uh, and let do it. <laughs> Good to know that. Yeah. So did, how did your friend find out about the carnivore diet? Um, probably just scrolling on YouTube, finding your yeah. page. <laughs> Oh, well. I guess um, I don't think there was a crazy story behind that. Just yeah. getting to know it. Maybe he was also looking up his disease and finding your page because I was also looking videos and there are like loads of people that you're helping. Like under each and every video you're posting, there are a hundred people telling, uh, yeah, I'm 70 now. I filled my best after one month of carnival. I feel like 30 years younger. Like, yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Well, that's the thing too, you know, and, and, and then you'll find one, you know, angry vegan in there going like, you know, there's no, you know, no one ever actually gets better on carnivore. Like, did you read the comments around you? you yes. Know, that's you, just, that's you can't just deny that. Blindness. Yeah. It's just willful blindness really at that point. So, but to, to be honest, uh, I'm also like doing social media since March and I also 
haven't really talked about me being carnivore. I never post my food, like usually. And I'm also, uh, I'd rather say, yeah, I'm not eating any carbs instead of saying mm. I am only meeting, then I'm counting five products and then I'm ending with salt. And when, once you say that you're eating salt as a product that you're eating, <laughs> people are getting like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what do you mean you're only eating five products, including salt? Yeah. So um, once you're saying, yeah, I don't eat any carbs, people will just think you're on a diet and eating or no sugar or something. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the thing. You know, keto is pretty much accepted. You say, oh, I'm just sort of doing keto, just not eating carbs or Thanks. something. Like that. And people people tend to tend to leave you alone after that. <laughs> yes. I also you you said once in a um in a YouTube video or something uh, that people don't care what you're eating on social yeah. gatherings and you are so right when you were saying that i thought like mm, i don't know about that but <laughs> because i think that there was um uh, i wasn't really on social gatherings at that point or i just avoided it um and then you were saying this and i didn't believe you mm -hmm. um then i went on social gatherings like on birthdays i was on weddings and no nobody cares The worst thing yeah. that's going to happen to you is people asking, "Are you? Aren't you eating anything else?" And then you're answering, "Yes." And maybe additionally, "I don't eat any carbs." And that's basically the whole conversation. Yeah. So maybe they are asking some curious questions about the diet, and maybe they are like, mm, "I don't know. That's that's a good thing to do." And you're either talk to them or you just quit the conversation and talk about anything else. So nobody cares. No. Yeah. And. And and as soon as like you've you've said that a couple of times too, and just sort of people know they just you know they know that you're going to eat what you want to eat, and that's it. You right. Know, most people just grab the things that they want, and and leave everything else. You know that's a very normal thing. And so mm -hmm. you're just grabbing the meat. Like most people don't even notice. You know I've always just gravitated towards the meat anyway. So no one was batting an eye when it was the only thing <laughs> it was meat. Because that was usually the only thing on my plate. And I was just always just getting a whole bunch of meat, maybe a couple other things. You know, but now it's yeah. meat. And so it didn't it didn't change anything when I when I wasn't thinking about it. You know, when I was first True. in my 20s, I, not a single person said anything to me in five years. And that, <laughs> wow, yes. I didn't even think about it. You know, I never said anything. I never telegraphed it. It was just like I ordered what I wanted. I ate what I wanted from that order. And I never said anything. And no. said anything to me as a result. And then later when I'm doing this and now I'm like self-conscious, now I'm like doing a diet. Whereas before I was like, I'm eating goddamn plants. I'll tell you that. And so I would just like pick out <laughs> the things that I want and, and that was it. And, um, and then, and then, yeah, then I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm self-conscious about it. I felt I had to explain. I had to say something mm. when everyone's like, sorry, because like, if you think something's off, everyone else thinks something's off. And so then True. they, I'm like, oh, okay, well, what's going on here? If you're don't making a big a thing out of it, nobody like nobody else is going to make a big thing out of it. Yeah. <laughs> And I also wouldn't be here if I cared what other people are thinking. So there's that too. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so does that does that work? So in your social circles and social settings, you know, going out and going to bars, do you still drink at all or not really? I'm sometimes drinking, like occasionally. Um, I noticed that I can't drink a lot more when I can't yeah. work. like I never really drank any like a lot anyways or I didn't really enjoy drinking a lot um but going carnivore I noticed that like after three sips for example I'm completely drunk but it's just depending on the day um I am also worse on the next day it messes up with my digestion as well and I feel worse than before I like mm. before I never was con like before I was carnivore Yeah. Mm. So it's just the thing that your um, tolerance is probably in general lower to any toxins. There are also some foods that I can't um, eat anymore, like cream cheese, or, um, mascarpone, um, yeah, something like that. I'm also having, like, I can't digest that now yeah. either. Um, yeah. And yeah, so friends they were asking questions i mean a lot of them still think probably that i am like malnourished especially my grandparents yeah. <laughs> they are like um 
like don't you want a star don't you want cake um but no, in the end they are also like fine deficiency. with yeah. sorry you have a cake deficiency i think you're malnourished you need cake yes yeah once you when when you if i just ate ice cream all day long and all week long nobody would like make no. any any a comment but once you're uh start eating meat everybody is suddenly a doctor and tell you what <laughs> that you're malnourished like what do you mean yeah yeah and especially doctors like oh my god you're gonna kill yourself this is probably a doctor that's that's overweight and out of shape telling you that you're living an unhealthy life yes oh my god that's that's so sad to see um i think you also posted that when um being in a hospital they are like or in cancer hospital something like that then they mm. are having like sweets everywhere and that's just so sad yeah. because i also um watch a lot of youtube videos or about how carnivore helped cancer patients and i think this is this is crazy like um um cancer cells can't um um or, or they need they can't live on ketones and they need glu glucose or something it's yeah yeah exactly. how is nobody talking about that that's so well, sad. It's funny because you know we've known about this for 100 years and we oh. this in medical school that cancer cells suck up a lot of glucose and that's why we put radio labeled glucose in into your an injection and then do a ct scan and we see where all that glucose goes and it okay. goes right into the cancer wherever that is oh. And uh, depending, you know, I mean, some things aren't, aren't as all as metabolically active, you know, so, but uh, quite often you find, you'll find hot spots, you know, if there is a hot spot, that means the metabolic rate is, is much higher. So the metabolic rate will be higher, but also the demand in general will be higher because it's dysfunctional. Mitochondria mean that it needs a lot more glucose to just run normally. And mm. it's, it's, um, you know, and that's something, you know, it's called the Warburg effect. I mean, we've known that for actually a hundred years now, pretty much. And so it's, um, but it's just something that has just been papered over by other people that were sort of detractors of, of Warburg and, uh, and tried to say that, that he was wrong and it wasn't, you know, the mitochondria don't actually get damaged and things like that. But we look at, you have electron microscopes and they're very damaged and, uh, and they're sort of destroyed. So you're like gutted, like if you look on the inside, should have all these membranes, the internal membranes mm -hmm. of mitochondria just going up and down. It's called the criste. And in, in a lot of cancers, they're just gutted. They're just they're just not there. You know, so how, how you know have that action, that function, if if that entire organelle is is gutted and and almost not even there, it's not functional. So, you know, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. But you know, we know this, you know, and even, even if you don't believe Warburg, we still know the Warburg effect is a thing. You didn't get that one wrong, you know? So yes, cancer cells require 400 times the amount of glucose, um, you know, essentially, and uh, as normal cells. So giving them a bunch of carbs and sugar is just insane to me. And I have spoken to so many patients that have said, you know, their oncologist has told them directly and they've asked, they say, Hey, is there a special diet? Do I need to be eating something? No, no diet change. You eat whatever you want, cake, ice cream, candy, drink alcohol, yeah. whatever you want to do. That blows my mind. You know, that you'd say that you, you, you tell someone that they can like drink and do all sorts. I mean, I, I get it from one perspective of like, Hey, look, just enjoy your life. You know, go to Amsterdam, yeah. go to light district, just go to town, you know? Exactly. Um, if you, if you were trying to save this person and that person's trying to save themselves and I mean, why would you go through chemo and radiation if you, if you weren't trying to live longer or survive, then, then you should really be focusing on optimizing their health. I mean, even if this doesn't have a direct effect on, on cancer survival or, or just cancer, uh, physiology, mm -hmm. you being healthier you're going to be able to weather the chemo and radiation better. You're going to, you have, a, you will just, the odds are you'll have a better chance at survival because you're just going to be healthier overall. And a lot of times chemo just damages people so much that they just, they die from the chemo and they, they don't survive treatment. So it's, um, it's very strange to me 
that they would say that. And I really hate seeing that at the hospital where it's just like, there's almost no meat anywhere. It's just sugary carbs. Just sugar. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's just like a Fruit Loops commercial, you know, up in, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just so much just sugar mm -hmm. crap. And then, and then they give them packets of sugar to add to their sugary cereal and to their coffee and tea and things like that. I mean, it's, it's, oh just, appalling. it's just appalling. When you're saying it reminds you of an ad, um, I remember this graphic that showed that, um, I don't know what government uh, said that, but uh, there was Fruit Loops on number one or much higher, healthier mm. than than eggs. Eggs was like yeah. unhealthy. And then yeah. like some sweets were on top. I was like, is this a meme? Is this serious? Are they serious? Is Are any yeah. people looking at this and being like, yeah, legit. I mean, eggs yeah. are, um, I don't know, yeah. bad. Makes sense. So, yeah. So there was, um, so that was, that was from the Tufts um, nutritional recommendations. And um, uh, so, so someone put that together and said, look, if you, if you go by the Tufts recommendations, this is what's going to come out to be. Like these things are going to be in green and like with a higher rating, like watermelon has a rating of 100. That's like the mm -hmm. best thing ever. There's like there's no faults in watermelon. Apparently that's just, that's just the perfect food for human beings. <laughs> and, Sugar and water. And then, um, and then, It was like frosted flakes was actually ranked higher than corn flakes. So the sugar made it better, apparently. Makes okay. sense. And and then yeah, so that was all in the green. Eat as much of this as you want. And um, and then down in the yellow was like, ooh, you know, maybe space it out. And then the red was just like, don't eat ever or hardly ever, or really limit. And that's where like ground beef and eggs were. And um And so, you know, one, one person, I've seen people critique this saying that, well, you know, that you, you can't compare the different categories, right? So this was like in the carb category or the fruit category or the cereal category, or whatever, you know, these were greens, these were yellow, these were reds. And then in these other categories, these were green, yellow, and red. But what you can compare is green, yellow, and red, because these were the recommendations. The green was mm -hmm. eat as much as you want. Yellow was eat in moderation. Red was don't eat at all or eat barely ever. So whether that was in the meat category and this is the worst of the meat, it still said eat barely ever, you know? And uh, and for, you know, Lucky Charms and sugar. <laughs> yeah, Lucky Charms it was. That was eat as much as you want. Great <laughs> stuff, you know? And and the thing is too, is that people say, well, that those aren't actual serious guidelines when you do that. Not true that they actually sent out graphics like that to all of us in, in the um, healthcare service here in Australia. Um, and it was probably one of the one general, you know, work emails I've ever looked at. <laughs> Because they just get, you just get slammed like 30 emails a day. It's just garbage uh, from these general spam emails from everybody uh, from the, you know, the system wide sort of things. And mm -hmm. So this was like one of the only ones I ever looked at. And I spent the next like two hours freaking out and like writing emails, like angry, <laughs> like everybody. And I can't imagine that so well. Had that out. And that actually had it out. I said like, you know, all this stuff banged out and it had frosted. So that's where it was. It, it, the Where I saw it, it said frosted flakes were above corn flakes. I'm like, what? Or sorry. And like, and like honey nut Cheerios were above normal Cheerios. It's like, so the sugar is better. That's what, that's what you're saying. You know, that's more points. And then your meat and eggs were in the red. And I was furious. So there's nothing in the green that was meat based, you know, um, that I remember. And uh, maybe it was some yellow stuff, like some dairy or something like that. But there was red was where the, the meat was. And so I ended up emailing the hospital and just saying, hey, look, this is, you know, I'm, I'm sure no one cares. But, you know, I've, I've done a lot of research into this. Wow. And, um, you know, spent, you know, 20 years researching this. So, you know, this is something I actually know about. And I would, I would just point you to these sorts of things. And I had like certain critiques, you know, certainly the sugar and like, look at these, these research articles and all these sorts of things. And, and I said, you know, I'm happy to discuss this and, and you know, work on, on something different that I think would be better for our patients and staff. Um, you, know, you know, please give me a call. 
And, um, you know, I got an email from whoever had received it and say, okay, yeah, you know, ordering this on to, you know, people in charge, never, never heard a thing. You know, never. Of course not. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, definitely not. And uh, they don't care. You know, this is like, this is the guidelines. We don't care what you think about it. You know, just do it, do what you're told. And, um, you know, or, or just, they don't care. It's the guidelines. They don't care if you follow them or not. Their job is done. They're not, they're not picking up the phone, you know? So it's a bit that, um, that people are as, you know, blase about that, you know, and people don't, because they don't realize, you know, I walk around the hospital and I see, I see people eating this stuff and I'm looking at it and like, that's why you're here, you know? And uh, that what we're feeding you is what's causing you. That's what's making you sick. It, it's true. People know that they know that, mm -hmm. but they just can't stop because it's like sugar addiction or whatever. They are saying that this is the only happiness that they are getting for, or the comfort that they are getting from food. And it's just not the not the best thing. You know, you would you're feeling miserable when you're turning to food, which makes yeah. you even more miserable. And you can't change that because it's the only thing that gives you some somewhat a comfort. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, and that's a vicious cycle to get into, and uh, you need to get out of it, and and that's and that's pretty sad too. You know, if, if that's if that's what gives your life joy is just eating, you know, it, it means you know it's it's not really it's not going very well else, you know, outside of that, and that could be, and that is the case for some people. But the thing is, is that when you do start fixing your diet, your mental health is helped as well and then you start being interested in things and going out and doing things and meeting people and socializing and and taking on activities and things like that and that can actually really help give you joy and then you have joy outside of food i think that's sort of yeah. like the backup you know they don't have anything so this is the thing that they can do because mm -hmm. they don't have other things so like okay well you get better you get healthy and then you have, have those other things and then you don't need the food to feel happy mm -hmm. But they are just not willing to commit to changing the diet because it, this is yeah. like this short-term satisfaction that you're getting from food and you can't see that you're only seeing that you don't eat the sweets that you would like to eat but you can't see that when you're continue doing that for a month maybe you feel much better but that's like oh yeah it requires a lot of discipline yeah well it does but the thing is though too is that you know before they're told the alternative is is eating like you know brussels sprouts You know, and I've said it before, but no one likes Brussels sprouts. And so, you know, they're saying there's this like, don't eat this food that tastes good and you enjoy and makes you feel good. Eat this crap that tastes like, you know, dog's water and is bitter and miserable, makes you feel like crap and you hate it. And uh, and then you'll, you'll, you'll feel better. And they do that. They do that for six months and they're miserable and they hate it. And so they're like, well, screw that. You know, I don't want to do that. Whereas, You know, a lot of people actually do want to get better. It's just that they've been told to eat the wrong thing. And uh, and and that's the really nice thing about carnivore as well, is that if you can convince people of this and talk to them and show them that, hey, this is different, you know, um, but a lot of times they're very excited to give it a try. And and, and that's why, you know, we're, we're having this conversation because more and more people are getting on it and getting interested in it, and which is really good. And, you know, I have seen a lot of people in very bad situations lose a ton of weight and uh, and and get a lot of their health back and so it's it's really good to see that because you know a lot of these people you know they are you know it is said that like well it's just discipline well you know some you know for some people it is some people it's, it's, there's massive hormonal issues and psychological issues and and other sorts of things that it's actually it's more difficult and um uh, especially when you sort of get past that point where it's sort of like a point of no return where you're very overweight and very sick, you know, it's, it's very difficult, but even then, you know, a lot of these people have tried so many different diets and they just don't work and don't work and don't work. And they get very discouraged and they get told it's just calories in calories out. All you got to do is just not eat enough and you know, you'll be fine. And, and it doesn't work. And, um, and then they get very discouraged because they're told that they're a liar or, you know, just not trying hard enough. You know, I've seen, I've seen doctors that do sort of weight loss stuff, but it's a traditional, you know, I mean, it's like, you don't even need a doctor for this. He's just telling you just like, yeah, don't eat so much and, and work out sometimes. Cause it's like, 
thanks doc you know do i write a check or like what you know what, what do you do for that and um and uh and you know i've seen like memes on on these guys pages where it's just like doc, patients like hey you know doc i've I've cut calories. I've, I've increased exercise. I'm, I'm eating less calories. I'm taking in like, but I just can't seem to lose weight. And then there's like the doctor is sitting there smiling, just going, you're lying. You know, it's just like, you're an asshole, you know, because like, you know, that, that happens all the time, you know, but these people just don't understand that, that that's a thing. They just, they just, they think that this is the only way the body works and hormones don't exist. And, um, you know, you just eat less than your you know, you work out more than the, the energy you eat and you'll just, you'll just lose weight. I'm sorry. That just doesn't happen all the time. It can happen, but you know, why is it that when I started eating 4,000, 5,000 calories a day from <laughs> about 1500 calories a day, eating a buttload of vegetables and just lean meat, I lost 23 pounds in 10 days eating more. Right. And I was like working out all the time. So I was like putting on muscle too. Right. So why is that? You know, if I'm eating 3000 more calories a day, then I'm losing weight dramatically and I'm just shredding fat. My yeah. mom also started uh, losing like 10 kilos or something when she oh, yeah. did. But, but we are like, I was uh, helping her. She tracked her food, uh, but she was also like starting eating more meat and eggs. And I like, it <laughs> somehow convinced her to try it a bit in that direction and yeah she lost weight she's like every few days she's telling me like yeah look and she's excited and that's great i love to see that and that i could help yeah. her um yeah oh good so how long has she been doing it now um was that like a few months maybe ago oh, oh good yeah I think yeah so she's, so she's into it yeah yeah but i mean uh, she just she did it to lose weight and i was like hey let, let me help you um mm -hmm. and then yeah um we decided how much calorie deficit she should go on and what she's eating and yeah so that worked pretty well and it's just good to see how happy people can get once they manage that because i know how hard it is to always worry about food and your body and everything and it's just good when once you fix it it's like it's fixed you know it's mm -hmm. um you know what it takes to maybe lose weight, to change your body the way that you want it to change. And that's just a calming thought because you don't have to worry because you can control whatever you like, you can control it. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, you can. And that, and that's the nice thing is that people do get their control back. I mean, we're in the era of being told that obesity is, is genetic and there's nothing you can do about it. And you have to just take these medications. I'll just have some right here. And, you know, and people are just rushing after it even though they've been told when it came out that in two years, even if you continue taking it, you'll regain more weight than you lost. What, what are people doing? Um, they're just, they're setting themselves up for disaster, but mm -hmm. you know, you know, being told that, they, I mean, it's genetic. I mean, that's just so silly. 80%, you know, they say 80% of, of uh, obese parents have obese kids. And it's like, okay, that's because the obese parents are feeding the kids what they're eating, right? So, I mean, that's right. hard. You don't need to go to school for that. You know, <laughs> this is pretty <laughs> sad. It's, and... uh, I'm laughing because it reminds me of a meme that I saw. Um, it says, yeah. um, diabetes runs in my family. And the other person saying, nobody runs in your family. Like, Yeah, nobody runs in your family. Yeah, that's because <laughs> no in your family, yeah. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but... Yeah, you're you are like you are raised, maybe. Well, that's it. And and type two diabetes seems to follow um, in families more than type one diabetes, but of course that's going to be patterns of behavior as well, right? And so, you know, if you have a parent with type two diabetes, you're more likely to get that than if you had a parent with type one diabetes, say. But of course, this is because type two diabetes comes from eating and drinking the wrong things. And the fact that, you know, obesity rate was, you know, was sixth of what it is now, you know, 50 years ago is mm -hmm. tells you this is not genetic, you know, because we have the same genes 50 years ago, was, you know, two generations. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Um, wasn't. Yeah. 
And Wasn't so that graph also at the time um, when they started saying that sugar is, you know, that fat is responsible for all, mm. like that fat is um, worse right. and sugar is really okay. And yeah. then suddenly the statistics showed that diabetes went up like a lot. Yeah, yeah dramatically increased by, it was like 5.8 fold from like the late 70s, 1980 to like, I think 2017 or something like that. Was the time I look. So yeah, I mean, it's not slammed out. So just by a factor of six. And so that, that's, um, that's not genetic. And you know, all the, and, and people say, oh, well, we just weren't, we just weren't noticing it. We didn't know about it. Like, no, I'm sorry. You can't just, you know, blame, you know, people being idiots uh, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. And that's the thing too. We, we said that, so, ah, we probably just weren't noticing it. It just goes against everything because we took such close statistics and look at, uh, looks at things. And, um, and I mean, you die from diabetes. I mean, it's causes serious, serious harm. And, uh, so of course you'd be able to diagnose it. Um, and then it started rising in the nineties. Ah, probably was always there and you've seen kids with it, but that was called adult onset diabetes back then. It was called juvenile and adult diabetes. And then a bunch of kids started getting adult diabetes and they're like, well, how, how can this possibly be? And so they just, instead of about it for even a second they just renamed it type 2 diabetes probably was happening all the time we just didn't know i mean that's i mean that there's i mean there's the reason why you know we make sayings about you know making assumptions like you don't don't make assumptions because you make an ass out of me and you it's just like you just you, it's stupid you know don't assume things especially when it, when you're talking about the health of billions of people and then but let's say you just didn't notice it in the 90s, we started paying attention. Okay, well, we got to pay attention to this now. In the 2000s, it went up. In 2010s, it went up. It's still going up. So is that because we were just stupid not paying attention in the 2010s or the 2000s or the 1990s? doesn't make any sense. I mean, eventually, you, you stretch this out long enough, you realize that, no, this is, this is getting worse. And obviously, it's getting worse because we're doing something to our environment. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the Carnivore Market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Behind. Check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right, thanks, guys. I, I thought it was it was actually pretty cool. One of the things you said uh, when we were um, talking online that you don't really go to grocery stores, really, do you? <laughs> no, I, I usually go to grocery stores to buy water. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the meat I'm getting is usually deer. Okay. Or cow, but I'm getting that from farmers or local hunters. Okay. Um, yeah, so I just hunting cows? don't really probably Sorry? Not, not like hunting cows, You're just like no, <laughs> probably not sporting. No, um, uh, to, they sort of just come up suppliers. to you. Yeah, what's that? No, what do you mean? Two different suppliers I have like a hunter and mm -hmm. then like a farmer that yeah. I can buy cow from yeah. or like yeah. meat. Nice, um, yeah. That's, I just don't like really the thought of buying meat in a grocery store when mm -hmm. I don't know where it's from, where I don't know what medications they got, if they got any vaccines, how they lived, um, if they were stressed and everything like that. I just mm -hmm. don't want any of that in my body, really. So I decided to go or find alternatives. Um, and yeah, that's how I got to my hunter. And yeah, I can just uh, suggest that to everybody that... Um, you find like local farmers you can ask anybody that has any animals like even chickens or something you can mm. ask them and that it's a network they probably know loads of people that have animals as well and then you can just call each and everybody that you're having and you're asking about how the people living uh, how the animals are living how um, they are treating them what medications they are getting what vaccines and what price and then you can decide uh, if you'd like to buy yeah. meat not from the grocery stores anymore.
And the hunting idea is, is pretty cool. I, I know in America, you're not allowed to sell wild game. And so like, okay. like if you hunted and you took down a deer, you wouldn't be able, you could give it away to someone, but you wouldn't be able to sell it um, because you know, it doesn't go through USDA checks and, you know, for parasites and contamination and things like that. So for, it's the same with us, but uh, only for wild pigs. Oh, okay. You have to have them checked uh, for parasites as well. Mm -hmm. um, but deer is not, um, does not need to be checked, I think. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, uh, but this checking is not such a big deal, I think. You're just yeah. sending something out with the with the mail and then you're getting a result back. So it's okay. not a not something that's not possible. No, that's very easy. Well, that's good that you can you can actually do that. Yeah, because you know, it's you can't really get moose without hunting it. And so like mm -hmm. unless you have someone who hunts moose and like they he gives it to you. Or she gives it to you like it's um you can't get it like you can't really get it at a at a restaurant really um i guess you can run the moose but I, you know you don't know what they're what they're eating but um yeah that, that i always thought that was a shame because there's so much so much wild game it's just amazing but like you have you have to hunt it yourself you know or else have yeah. a that's going to give it to you so that's great that you yeah can i i was also thinking about starting hunting but i think that's that's probably not going to be my favorite hobby. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. to even get the license and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's it's a great thing that you, if you could supply yourself like that. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's also a good skill to have, you know, because at least you at least know that you know if 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 some if it came down to it, you could you know you could get food and you could feed yourself. I, family i know exactly what you're meaning yes yeah yeah that's why i think that um that's yeah well it's just a good skill to have and also just understanding where your meat's coming from you know it's uh you should know where it's coming from we used to do we used to do that we used to, people used to keep animals and they would they you know they would uh you know keep and kill and slaughter their own animals and go mm -hmm. hunting and dress them and cut them up and like that's what the food was you know and so you know, people understood that. Now we've been so separated from it that True. It, it's um, just this appalling idea. It's like, no, that's just that's just the world, and the world isn't nice. The world isn't a fantasy land. It's like it's the world, and that's the world we live in. Yes, I also think that you have to be aware of the fact that, like, something maybe has to die for you to live, and that's just it. try to live a purposeful life because you can't, no matter what diet you have, change that fact. Um, I also um, visited um, like somebody that has animals and I was there um, how they slaughtered their goose. So just to see that, just to know what's happening, like you can't just um, be blind to the fact that animals are dying with mm. this diet. But yeah, you have to be well, aware that, of that. Well, that was something in um, Marcus Aurelius's uh, meditations where he said, when he was talking about dying and this was, this was a natural thing and you shouldn't be, and he was one of the Stoics. And um, he said that, you know, you shouldn't, you know, death is natural. Everything lives and they, they're born, they live, they die. And so this is just a part of nature. It's just something natural. And you shouldn't be afraid of, of anything natural. You know, if you're, it's just, it's just part of nature. And so if you're afraid of something natural, you know, you're a child, you know, so you shouldn't be afraid of death because it's just, it's just something natural. And that's sort of how I feel about, about, you know, eating meat. I mean, this is just, this is just nature and this is just the world. And the sad truth is, is that something does have to die for us to live. Something has to die for all animals to live, whether it's plants or animals. And so that's just, that is the world. And, you know, maybe we can change that down the road, but right now that's the world we live in. And so just going against that saying, no, Absolutely not. You're not allowed to do that. I, I, I do think that's quite, quite childish uh, because if you want to make that choice for yourself, that's that's perfectly legitimate. But you pushing that on other people, you're hurting people. And so people getting Alzheimer's, they're getting strokes, they're getting dementia, they're getting cancer, they're getting all, um, autoimmune diseases and, and, and neurodegenerative diseases. They're getting all these things that, they sh that shouldn't happen. 
you know, people are dying in their thirties from multiple sclerosis because they react so strongly to the plant toxins. And also the children. Yeah. And that's exactly, weak you know, mothers or something like that. What yeah, I heard. Kids aren't developing properly. Kids are getting diseases that they may not ever get if they ate a proper diet. You know, people are aging and suffering for decades. And then until they just fall apart and crumble, they're, they're, they're just walking and their hips are breaking. And, you know, the bones, what, what, what elephant has ever broken a hip walking through the Serengeti? Oh, interesting. It, never, you know. You're right. Like, no, it's, it's just not a thing. But, you know, so we're doing something and we're, we're degrading our bodies and our health and our mind until we die 50 years early. And we've suffered for the 50 years before that. And we've just been trying to hold on to some health and just instead of just living our life, raising our kids, you know, taking care of our family and enjoying our life. We're just constantly thinking about being sick and being tired and taking medicine. And, you know, we're just, it's, that's not a life that's not living. And then the only thing that we have, you know, to entertain ourselves because we're so sick is just food. It's just, well, well this is the only thing I have. And, you know, that, that's really sad. And so you're, you're putting that on someone else. You know, you want to do that for your life. That's your decision. But you don't get to do that to other people. You don't get to take away 50 years of their life. You don't get to, you know, rob their children of their health and their proper development and developing to their proper IQ and proper height and stature and being able to, um, you know, to, to achieve the things that they want to. I mean, I think that's just, I think it's, uh, I think it's very you know, foolish. And, um, and if you try to force that on people, I think it's evil. I understand what you're meaning. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So, so there are a lot of people your age that may look at this and may want, you know, want to try this, but they're very, very scared about, you know, their friends and social settings and things like that. You know, what, what do you, what do you say to people, you know, your age and your circles that, that are thinking about trying this, but they're concerned about, about you know, what other people are going to think? Lovely question. So first, if you, if you are concerned how your friend's going to react no no friend of you that's really your friend would ever um discourage you in doing what you really want to do what you thought about doing you knew the health benefits you are educated on that topic i hope you are <laughs> so then when you're going to your friend and telling them yeah i decided to go carnivore they should never uh, discourage you in doing that i mean they could, they probably will ask questions and you have to answer them um but yeah, don't be afraid to go carnivore. Um, mm. Don't be afraid what other people are thinking. Nobody really cares. Um, they will get used to it, <laughs> definitely. And like after everybody knows that like after five minutes, the discussion is usually over. So that's just it. Um, it's your life. And if you decide to go carnivore, you can do that. Yeah. yeah. And so how are your friends reacting to all this? it's totally depending like uh, usually they are um like asking questions um especially like what am i eating how am i doing that why am i doing that um why do you think are that you this crazy? is healthy yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely um of course <laughs> that's like of course the number for uh, number one reaction that was my reaction as well when i discovered that diet um mm. but of course they are all accepting how I'm eating, obviously, because I don't hinder anybody eating um, <laughs> whatever they want. A lot of my friends are vegetarians as well, by the way. So yeah. it's just we are eating different things and that's fine. I also mm. got a lot of respect for what I'm doing because uh, some were also saying like, wow, I also wanted to be more healthy and I um, also should try eating less sugar. Like, um, it's so good that you're doing that. Um, I also want you to improve my eating habits um yeah so that's overall the few i mean still there are people they are um regularly telling me that i'm malnourished and i'm how long i'm going to do this and um yeah if i don't want to eat cake for example yeah it's <laughs> so, so funny yeah, but... like like how is not eating cake the you know the unhealthy option it's like, what, what are you doing you have to eat cake like you're, you're yeah. going why? What? What was? What's the problem there? You know, most of the time people say like, "Don't eat meat because you're going to get fat," and now you're saying you need to eat 
you need to eat cake or else you're going to get too thin. Like, I mean, what, what's the argument there on, <laughs> on not eating There's, cake? It's just because it's abnormal and people are not used to uh, thinking about what they're eating, probably like that. Mm -hmm. And because it's abnormal, they um, just think that it's not recommended. And it's also not recommended officially. So maybe that's as well, if you're... Yeah, well, um, we've seen, we've seen yeah. how the official recommendations have gone, you know, so... Um, mm, yeah. I think you're probably on, on pretty good ground when you don't go by the official recommendations for a lot of things. Um, some 100%. Things, <laughs> Jesus, some of these things. And um, well, that's great. So has, have uh, any of your friends been been swayed by your by your arguments um you mean persuaded to try the same yeah um hmm, let's see um there was an exchange partner that she was also selling like wow i thought like the same as i did um mm -hmm. i thought vegetarian uh, was the way to go i thought this is the most healthiest thing you never knew about i never knew about like the option to only eat meat and mm -hmm. i love eating meat i should yeah. uh I love eating meat like this is uh, amazing to think about only eating meat but on the other hand yeah. she said like well she's not educated enough she doesn't know really if it's the best thing so she just wants to stick to eating everything which mm. everybody thinks is the best thing to do um yeah yeah get a balance get a balance um, but... with the with the food yeah sorry just say they want a balance you want a good ba you got a balance of everything yeah balance of you know poison and a balance of food <laughs> good balance you know mm -hmm. yeah that's so exactly it's i mean it's a big step it takes a lot of courage yeah. i think to go carnivore uh it requires a lot of disciplines i mean uh, there are a lot of occasions that you could eat different other things always uh and you just have to say no to that um yeah it's also um when traveling, for example, with friends, it's just that they are cooking separately than I do, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I mean, it is a bit of a thing to eat different, but yeah. it's also worth it for me, at least. And I can't imagine going back. So, um, no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I can't either. And I mean, I, I have no interest in it. And everyone says, well, you, you must have a lot of willpower. Like, no, not really. Uh, yes any any willpower to do exactly what you want to do and you know, the opposite you know i have no interest in eating any of that stuff because it doesn't make me feel good i don't feel it's, it's so interesting yeah exactly when, uh, when i see people like eating bread i mean sometimes i get like what what means cravings like i'm seeing something and i'll be like mm, i wish i could eat that as well but usually when i'm eating bread uh, when i'm mm. seeing bread i'm like how are you eating that this is this is what, what are you eating like I can't yeah. imagine that. It's it's crazy. And I think that's how probably vegetarians are always thinking when they're looking at meat. This mm -hmm. is like this kind of disgust. And I have that towards vegetables and especially bread or something like that. It's like, <laughs> how can you eat that? It's, yeah. It must taste like nothing and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's certainly what I think. Yeah, I don't even look at it as food anymore. Just, just doesn't mm -hmm. register. Yeah. I agree. Great. Well, Anna, well, thank you so much. That was that was really great um, to have you on. I really appreciate you taking time. Um, do you have? Um, can you tell us where where we can find you? People can follow you, and if you have any any uh, final words. Yeah, um, I most active on Instagram. I have a podcast as well and a YouTube started, and I'm on TikTok okay. as well. So if you like, you can contact me on Instagram. I'm like curious to see what people are doing carnivore as well, and if you saw my podcast, um, and uh, like this podcast, and mm -hmm. I'm also, yeah, excited <laughs> for that as Great. well. Awesome! Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. We'll, we'll put links to uh, your Instagram and, and your um, podcast and YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, people can go and, and find you more there. So, Anna, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everybody, uh, for joining. Hopefully you liked that. If you've been thinking about starting a carnivore diet as well, you can find my uh, beginner's guide on getting started on a carnivore diet playlist. And in that has a lot of different videos on how to uh, get at it and how to do it and also why to do it, what's, uh, what's behind it that actually makes it make sense. And uh, if you want just a just a very baseline look at getting on a carnivore diet, just carnivore for beginners on my YouTube channel.
Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time.